Well, let's turn back to the major indexes. Joining me now is Peter Anderson, Chief Investment Officer at Anderson Capital Management. Peter, it's been a while, but it's good to see you back on the show. And, of course, a disappointing day down here on Wall Street. What's your outlook for the stock market? Well, you know, I was very surprised by what happened today, given the retail sales. Imagine if the retail sales actually surprised on the upside. I think you could still have a compelling argument that the market would have traded off more likely if retail sales were higher and better, because that would signal to me that the Fed hasn't yet achieved its objective. To me, what happened today was actually good news. Retail sales have slowed, and they were below expectations. So logically, I would have expected the market to rise because that would signal that maybe the Fed is actually seeing early signs of its um, campaign. So that isn't playing out today. It hasn't played out today. And I expect more volatility like this where people are just desperately struggling to interpret the daily economic data Hmm. and what that means for 2023. For me, I expect that the Fed will see more signs like this, that their hikes are working, and that they will probably pause in the first quarter of next year, which I think is a very bullish outlook. Um, I completely agree with you, Peter. I think the stock is down. Stock market is down today because of uh, that broadcast that we got from the Fed chair yesterday, indicating mm-hmm. that for the foreseeable future, rates will continue to rise. And it was good news. I agree uh, that the Fed's <laughs> aggressive policy action is working. Right? It is crimping demand to some extent, as we saw in these uh, figures. So historically, here's the odd thing, right? This is a seasonally strong time of the year. The so-called Santa Claus rally. Um, It's not a joke. Historically, the stock market does rise. The final five trading days of the current year, the first two trading days of the new year. Do you think Santa's going to come to town, albeit if it is for just a short time in this stock market? Well, I think Santa does not get a pass on how confused he must be also. I mean, you know, those rules of thumb work fairly well in an average world economy. But I have to keep emphasizing that this is anything but an average recovery. And I think we have forgotten how difficult it's been to figure out where we are in these cycles, given that COVID is, dare I say, over. And so the recovery out of COVID, I think, is anybody's guess as to how it's going to play out I do think in general the trend will be good news. Uh, I had thought a year ago that by now we would be dancing in the streets, so to speak, for this. But, you know, I'm not surprised that that call was wrong because we've never been here before. Mm-hmm. So what makes us expect that we know exactly how the textbook chapter is going to be on recovering from COVID? So yeah. Santa might be confused uh, just as much as the rest of us. <laughs> But we all still have a very positive intention of figuring this out and making money for our clients. Okay, so so what are you advising clients, uh, Peter, as a chief investment officer? Mm. What do they do with their money in this environment? Well, first off, it is such a scary environment that we have to warn anybody that needs cash uh, for the next year. They probably shouldn't even be in the market at all. And I hardly ever say that, but this is an extreme situation. So I do think those that worry uh, excessively about the daily uh, hinges of the market, they probably shouldn't be in this at all. And they should be in cash or treasuries uh, appropriate for the horizon. But for the others that have a long-term horizon, I do believe we will look back at this period among all the disasters that have happened, for instance, the SPACs, I mean, that warrants at least its own chapter in the history book, what have happened and what's happened to the SPACs. But there are other companies, including high tech companies, that I think are great buys now. But you have to have the courage to realize it's going to be choppy from now until probably May or April of next year. Yeah. But I do believe we will look back and say, boy, we passed on a lot of these uh, bargains but we just didn't have the stomach to step in at this point. So it was interesting um, that the Fed chair finally yesterday, I think, kind of did acknowledge, uh, whether it was implicitly um, or I guess indirectly, that, you know, sustained inflation of 2 percent is going to be a challenge um, going forward. And that's why he does want to act so aggressively and continue with these rate rises, because even though inflation might come down, 
he needs it to stay down, right? To stay down at 2%. Yeah. Um, for the long term to make this economy that benefits all. Do you think that is possible uh, based on the Fed's projections that we got yesterday and the comments that we heard from the Fed chair? Well, I think 2% is really an idealistic goal and Feds are known to posit those kinds of numbers. I bet behind closed doors, they would probably be just as happy with a three handle or a three and a half percent. I mean, that is, I think, achievable. Not without pain, but I do think 2% is a little bit idealistic and we probably won't see that. Uh, the all other thing is, you know, he raised his target rate. I think it's about, uh, 25 basis points. And that seems to have fueled this, uh, paranoia, so to speak, in the market today. I don't think 25 basis points in the scheme of things warrants that kind of reaction to the market. So I think we're all scratching our heads trying to figure out, is it a confluence of things that happened today? You know, the retail sales, what the Fed has said, uh, the 25 basis point extra value in the target rate. Maybe it's a combination of all those things. And of course, the disappointment that maybe Santa isn't going to come this year. <laughs> Uh, Peter, well, it is good to see you. Uh, thanks so much, of course, for joining ahead of the holidays on a busy market day. That's Peter Anderson, Chief Investment Officer at Anderson Capital Management. And let's now turn to the crypto crypto.